apologies for the recent delays, I seem to have come down with a touch of the old Combiner Wars hype overload. I mean, everything so far has been pure joy, but it's always either a giant six robot gestalt encompassing a whole wave's worth of toys, or a huge big deal 50 quid leader figure. This is turning into a bigger job than my actual job. So while I've scraped together the fragments of my shad nerves, let's see what we got in the backlog. I reckon it's been almost exactly a year since Age of Extinction clattered its way into our lives, so let's have an anniversary accosting of the one thing it made me want more than an aspirin and a lie down. It's Age of Extinction Generations Hound. So this fierce fat still was pretty much a movie for Ironhide surrogate, only with like 10 times the charisma and infinitely superior voice work from Jay to the G-Man. And as usual, there's nary a trace of his adorable old school descendants, save for the coat of green and the army theme. He's looking remarkably ripped next to the on-screen flabmeister, clearly sucking it in a smidge for max visual impact, with this sexy waistline and the spectacular pecs. Spectacular. Details not as horribly overcomplicated as some of the movie bots of old. I mean, he's still looking a little busy, but it's mostly sculpted rather than just parts overkill. Maybe could he use the liquor paint on his belly? It's a bit of a greenwash wasteland over here, but generally it feels collected and cohesive for a pleasingly kibble-free presentation. So the buzz looking positively lumberjacked up the front with a bit of a QB side cage and a handy stash chasm up in the rear. Bounce is boasting a bristly little black beard and a wrinkly wizened face under his standard issue soldier helmet. Legs are some pleasingly perf pillars with joints upon joints and flexible kneecaps and these pseudo-tire anti-kibble toe pieces. I mean, the real wheels are clearly back here, but I'll allow it. Bit weird on the old arms though, I mean the shoulders are shapely enough and I dig the ornamental ordnance here, but these unwieldy bingo wings and hand panels are a bit of a letdown, and these odd swoopy forearms have got like a squishy bullet belt thing going on. I mean it's not a deal breaker, but the weird material and the bizarre shape just leave them looking oddly camp. Zap. Check it out, Hansi's pretty keen on muscling on the old transcontinuity arms race. Look at this, he's packing two pistols, two five-barreled shotguns, two, I want to say grenade launchers, a combat knife, and this ridiculously hardcore triple minigun. The little ones can even pile up into this infinitely extendable booming centipede, and not unlike Road Buster, you can Frankenstein them all together into this obscene murder Voltron combiner blaster. Not not unlike Road Buster, though, Hand isn't just all violence all the time, and he can handily stash all his stuff away like a good boy. I kind of love how snugly everything stores. It really appeals to my boring house proud side. These thigh clips can be a little bit temperamental and poppy outy, but overall good effort. Robot mode then's a mostly marvellous military muscle man. I reckon it just about fits in with the rest of the auto team, although it does look a bit more like an actual robot next to some of the older ones. He just feels a bit more playable and less likely to collapse into pieces. Although, wow, smaller than Battleblade Bumblebee. Oh, mate. Still, I'm down with the hound. Sound as a pound. <laughs> is highly arm-centric and maybe a little bit underwhelmingly easy. I mean, the unpleasable man-child in me is just furious that they've dumbed down the complexity. What am I, a stupid baby? But speaking as a rational human being, I can't help but be relieved it's not as much of a fiddly nightmare as some of the earlier ones. I mean, imagine if your first ever Transformer as a six-year-old was like Mixmaster. This is fucking impossible. How does this work? Anyway, Han turns into this heathen cuboid of an APC from Oshkosh, which incidentally is both the manufacturer's name and the noise it makes coming down the street. <laughs> It's a pretty sweet little hench van, I guess. With like flashes of tasty sculpting here and there and a class little cap. But I don't know, man. It just doesn't feel like there's a lot of love here. I mean, look, most of it's just flat back end and functional green plastic. It doesn't do anything apart from weapon racks and not all of those even really work. And more than anything, it's just too dinky to look any good in a squad. Just give me something. TF4 Hound, then. Is he good? I don't know. Do I like him? Let's say yes. In his own right, he's a solid old soldier with a killer presence and a ton of personality and it's nice to have a movieverse figure I don't dread transforming. Because you should never dread playing with stuff. It's an action figure, it's not Dark Souls. And with that, you know, I think I'm pretty much done with movie bots. Considering the ever-expanding time gulf between now and when the toy line peaked, not to mention the recent influx of new stuff that panders more directly to me, it just seems like the Baybots don't really have a place on my shelves anymore. And that's a little bit sad, but Hound's a pretty powerful sign-off, and he'll always have a spot among the toys that look like me. Belly Man loved this time to Jeffrey at theredmoth.com, who found me a hand along with some neat hand-drawn character cards. Good man. In is. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe for more Thieves Awesome Transformers reviews. Two waves late since 2008.